The Walking Dead and its freaking cliffhangers. It's Super Videos back at you for another video. This is going to be my review and discussion for 708, the mid-season finale of The Walking Dead for season 7, which was called Hearts Still Beating. So right off the bat, this was an incredible episode. It started a bit slow, but I think we got a lot of payoff at the end, and it was very action-packed at the end of the episode, which was very great to see. So to start, we have... The conversation between Maggie and Gregory, and I thought that was very funny because it just shows how much Maggie is becoming a more likable character by the occupants of the hilltop, by the people at the hilltop, and how much they actually don't like Gregory either because when Gregory's being an asshole and not giving the apple to Maggie, you see Eduardo, I believe his name is, the one on the tower with Maggie, he tells Gregory, dude, She's pregnant, you know? It's funny how they have these snippets in there where you actually see that they don't like Gregory either. And from what Gregory says, the people actually like Maggie because she saved the place. And then, of course, going from there, we have the conversation between Enid, Sasha, and Maggie about Maggie running for president. So that was very funny as well. And then we have Sasha lying to Maggie about Jesus' whereabouts. Jesus left to find the sanctuary, but Sasha doesn't want Maggie to know that. Enid called Sasha on her lie and said, why are you lying? And they basically come to a, an agreement that it's for her own safety. But I actually agree with Enid. I think it's not just Sasha that's trying to get to Negan. Everyone is. We saw Michonne. We also saw Carl in the previous episode. Rosita as well in this episode. I'll get to Rosita. I have mixed feelings about Rosita, but coming back to Enid, I think she's right. There's a lot of people just planning and there's no organization. And I think what needs to happen before anything concrete can happen in terms of actually killing Negan and the Saviors is to have a plan. And you can't have separate plans. You need to have a plan together. And that's going to be the key to success. So it was just cool to see that conversation there. I liked seeing that. Then what we actually see is the mission Aaron and Rick are on when they're trying to get to the boat to get the supplies in this pond trap that the guy who lived there has. Now, of course, they get there, they get the supplies, and they find this note that has a middle finger that says, you may be winning, but you're still a loser. And that ends up being very bad to take with them. And we end up seeing why it's a bad idea to have that note and take it back with them but we'll come back to that so they actually make it back of course there's some close calls at one point i even thought that aaron actually died but i knew that this is just a technique they're using to make us think that he's dead but he's gonna jump out of the water and it actually ends up happening he actually survived which is pretty cool then after that they're loading the truck we see these boots and of course they could be from the person who lives there and was just watching them, but we can't really know for sure. And that comes into play at the end of the episode as well. And there's an after credit scene that this is related to that I'll get to, but that's basically where the cliffhanger comes from. But I'm going to be getting to those things. So in terms of them getting the supplies, of course, they get the supplies and they take it back to Alexandria, which is cool. Then we have the conversation between Richard, Carol and Morgan about fighting back against the saviors and things like that. Now, immediately I'm like, that's a bad idea. Ask Rick what happened when he wanted to strike first. It's just a bad idea. Now, we don't know if they're going to follow through with it or not. Of course, Carol and Morgan disagreed and they don't want to help. Morgan, we know because he has this all life is precious stance on things. So we know where he stands on it. But for Carol, it was actually surprising. She doesn't want to fight again. She doesn't want to kill anymore. And I thought that she was past that, but it seems not. And it's cool that we have that conversation there. And it leads to the next story that's coming up, where there's these plans to attack Negan, to take him out. So that's very cool to see then. Of course, we have Daryl escaping. 
He almost gets caught, but he hides in Dwight's dorm room. If you didn't notice, that was actually Dwight's room that he hid in, and he changed his clothes and everything and ate some peanut butter, and then he left. So that was actually Dwight's location. Now, we still don't know who gave him that note. That note could be coming from Dwight, but it also could be coming from Sherry as well. We now know for sure that the note didn't come from Jesus because there was no reveal about that. So I think the reveal about who actually left him a note is going to come into play later on. But of course, he escapes. He's trying to find a motorcycle and Fat Joseph shows up. Of course, Fat Joseph is like, you can just leave Daryl. I'm not going to say anything. But Daryl ends up killing Fat Joseph. Now, I think it was not the best thing to do just to kill him. But at the same time, if they let him go, he may snitch. And we know that he wasn't strong and he may actually snitch to Negan. So either way, Negan's going to find out that Daryl left, that he ran away, and finding the body doesn't help that case either, so I don't know. It wasn't the best idea, but there was nothing else for him to do. But then he actually finds Rick's python that Fat Joseph had. Now, in the previous episodes, where Daryl actually tried to escape the first time, the time it was a test, we actually saw Fat Joseph pull that python on Daryl. And immediately I'm like, is that Rick's Python? But now it's revealed that it is actually Rick's Python. And Daryl takes it, which is very cool. And Rick and the Python are actually reunited at the end with everybody else. So then Jesus shows up. And that was very funny when Jesus is just showing up and Daryl is just beating the shit out of Fat Joseph. But they end up escaping. And of course, they go back to the hilltop. Then the other part of the story, we have Michonne and the Savior. We have Michonne telling the Savior to go wherever Negan is, take me to Negan. And the Savior does, but we don't know if it is actually the sanctuary or not. I couldn't tell. They actually showed something, but I couldn't tell if it was just another outpost or if it was the sanctuary or if it was just a complete bullshit. But of course, Michonne ends up letting her go. Now, I don't know if that's the best idea either. They didn't reveal anything if she did in fact kill the savior. But in my opinion, the smartest thing to do would be just to kill her because then, of course, she's going to tell Negan and the others that Michonne did this. But at the end of the day, that's not going to matter because they're actually trying to strike back and they're trying to fight back. So it ends up not being a big deal. But if they wanted to keep that discreet and not let the saviors and Negan know that they actually have a plan, then it would have been a bad idea. But at this point, I don't think it matters anymore. But I still don't know what Michonne's plan was at that point. Did she just want to see where Negan lived? And what guarantee was there that the savior was going to take her to the right location? We still don't know if she did. But in either case, it was cool to see that she had these conflicting ideas about killing her, not killing her, fighting back, not fighting back. So it was actually very cool to see. Then we have the conversation between Rosita and Father Gabriel about the bullet and killing Negan. And Father Gabriel says that I agree that Negan has to die, but you don't have to die with him. And I think Rosita should have definitely listened to Father Gabriel because her actions ended up costing someone their life, just like Daryl's actions cost Glenn his life. Now, of course, for Daryl, it's more justified. For Rosita, there's no justification. She should not have done that. But like I said earlier, I have mixed feelings about Rosita. I see where she's coming from, but she's not thinking straight. One bullet isn't going to do anything for you. If you miss like she did, people are going to die. If you even kill Negan, what guarantee is there that the saviors aren't just going to kill everyone and not just you? But at the end of the day, she wants revenge and she acted irrationally, very irrationally. And she ended up getting someone killed. Going back to the conversation between Father Gabriel and Rosita, I actually liked when Father Gabriel asked Rosita, what about Sasha? When Rosita was saying that this person has that person, that they're all together, I have no one. And then Father Gabriel points out that Sasha is in the same position as you, so... You know, that was very cool to see and it was like an eye-opening moment for Rosita. And I was hoping she would get the gist that it's not a good idea, but she still followed through with it and it ended up being very costly. And then going back to the kingdom area, we have Morgan and Richard leaving. Of course, Carol wanting to be left alone and things like that. So Richard goes to this 
secret location. Now, I initially speculated that Richard had one of the saviors hostage there, but it ended up just being some supplies he had hidden. So, he's just hiding supplies and there's nothing more to it than that. Now, that just shows a bit of his character that he is a bit selfish, in my opinion, because why would he want to save all that supply for himself? Now, that could be just in case things go bad. That's probably what it is, but in either case, I think he shouldn't just be saving supplies for himself. And then we have Rick and Aaron making it back to Alexandria. And it was cool how Rick is just there and the door opens and there's just saviors opening the door. Then they go in and take out the supplies and they end up finding the note that they found back in that location they were at. And like I said, why would you take that note with you? Just leave it there. Like, there's no reason. And that ended up being very bad for Aaron because you have two of the saviors beating the shit out of Aaron and Rick obviously can't do anything. He has to watch. It was actually really hard to watch that scene because Rick can't do anything. You can see in his eyes, he wants to take him out, punch them, shoot them, but he can't do anything. And that made the scene very emotional and hard to watch. And then we of course have Spencer going to see Negan. And of course, being a comic reader, I knew what was coming, but I still wasn't sure that they were gonna do that in this episode. But seeing that Spencer went to Negan, I was pretty sure that they were gonna follow through with the comics. And it was actually brutal, to be honest. But I'll get to that. Now, we have the conversation between Spencer and Negan, Spencer saying that my mom used to be leader, now it's Rick and things like that. And they talk about the pool table. They ended up taking the pool table out and playing. And there's several onlookers, which is very cool. And that just made the scene so tense, especially when it was cutting back and forth between Aaron getting beat and Negan playing pool. So it's like someone's getting beat and then at the same time, Negan's just having a fun time, having a good time, just playing pool. So that was very cool to see. But then we have Spencer take it up a notch and say that I should be leader and that we should kill Rick. Of course, Negan doesn't like that. And being a comic reader, when Negan kept saying guts, 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 I was like, yeah, they're doing it. They're actually putting these things in there so that it pays off right when Negan stabs him. And of course, Negan ends up stabbing Spencer and his guts are just hanging out and it's just brutal. I think it's more brutal than the comics even because there's just blood everywhere. It's just pouring out and it's disgusting but I think they did a good job on that I think they did it better than the comics did and even there's some scenes that look exactly like the panels from the comics which is very cool I want to feel bad but Spencer was an asshole so I don't feel that bad about it but he still didn't deserve to die like that but going back to Negan we of course have Negan just being Negan and making a fuss about just killing someone and that pushes Rosita over the edge. She takes out the gun, boom, shoots. And at that moment, I'm like, whoa, did they just kill Negan? But of course, going back after the commercial break, we see that she actually just missed and shot Lucille. Now, I actually did speculate. I'm like, what if she misses with that one bullet? What is she going to do? And we actually saw that come to play. What is she going to do? Nothing. She missed. Negan was angry because... Lucille was just shot. Just a side note here, they actually did something earlier because in the comics, Carl shoots Lucille instead of Rosita and further down the line, not in this time period. So it's cool how they remixed that. But going back to Rosita, she misses, she can't do anything and the saviors just take her down and Negan's just pissed. He comes down and he notices that the bullet is homemade. He wants to know who made it. And Rosita keeps resisting, keeps resisting, even after doing something stupid, like trying to shoot Negan with one bullet. And then, of course, Negan orders Rat to just shoot someone, kill someone. And she turns around, boom, shoots Olivia in the face. And at that moment, I didn't exactly know who she shot. I thought she shot Carl, but then I realized that she shot Olivia. But it was just very hard to watch. She went down even though she wasn't a big character. I still liked her character. I wanted to see more of her, especially with these last couple episodes being more focused on her. But that is one thing. When The Walking Dead spends 
some time on one character, that character's time may be up. But of course she goes down, she's dead, rest in peace to Olivia, of course Spencer as well. And then Negan finds out that Eugene actually made the bullet. Now, I think Eugene did a ballsy move saying that he actually made the bullet, so he actually saved some more people from dying. But then, of course, Negan wants to take Eugene back to the sanctuary, which is kind of obvious because if Eugene knows how to make bullet, that's something very valuable to Negan. Of course, we saw that at the sanctuary, they have a doctor, and that doctor is the brother of the doctor that is at the hilltop. So Negan took one of the doctors from the hilltop back to the sanctuary. And in this case, he's going to take Eugene back to the sanctuary because he's valuable to him. I love it when Rick comes back and he's just pissed at Negan. He just saw two people get murdered and he's just pissed. And he says, I thought we have a deal and things like that. Of course, Negan tries to justify what he did by saying that I didn't kill Carl and I saved you from this Spencer dude who wanted you gone. But at the same time, he still murdered two people. But of course, Rick is smart and he knows that he shouldn't be fighting at this moment. They are everywhere. They can just shoot more people. They can just kill more people. So he just tells Negan to leave. Of course he does, but with Eugene. That whole sequence with the two deaths and everything like that was very cool to see. But the double deaths is something that they've been doing too much. They're just overplaying it at this point. And it's starting to not have that shock value anymore. So I hope they stop doing that. But it was actually very cool. That whole sequence was epic. And even though we lost two characters, one was really a minor character and we didn't like him. But for Olivia, that character, I guess, was a likable character. So rest in peace. But of course they go, the saviors leave and it's over. But it was just very emotional. It was very tense. I was at the edge of my seat every second of that sequence. Then, of course, coming back, we have Maggie at the Hilltop by Glenn's grave. And it's actually something that happens at the beginning of the episode as well. So it's cool how that kind of comes in and it's like a full circle. But then she sees that Rick, Michonne, Rosita, Carl, and also Tara are at the Hilltop. What Rick says actually put chills down my arm. Because he says that we need to fight back. You were right. We have to fight back. And it seems like we're going to have March to War. Which is pretty amazing. And of course we see Daryl is there. So they're all kind of reunited. So that's very epic. Very cool. So it's like a cool happy moment. After we just saw people get murdered. But I'm happy that they're reunited. And Rick has his mojo back. And he's going to fight back against Negan and the Saviors. And then, of course, at the end, the after credits. For people who missed it, there was an after credits where we see someone watching Alexandria and watching Father Gabriel. And when we see their boot, we realize that it's the same person that was at the pond area where Rick and Aaron took the supplies. So we don't know if he's from there or not, but he's going towards Alexandria. Not sure what he's going to do, but it's going to be interesting. But I got to say, The Walking Dead and its freaking cliffhangers. Like, seriously, why? <laughs> and it's just baffling that they keep doing these things that is just mm, cringeworthy because I want to know who it is. Why would you make us wait two months to see who is at Alexandria? It's not a big cliffhanger. It's not as big of a cliffhanger as the finale of season six. So we got to be grateful for that. But Overall, I really liked this episode. I would give it a mid-grade rating. There was a lot of things happening, a lot of great comic material also coming to life, action-packed, and some great storytelling in this episode. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll be back for another video.